When life begins to lose its flavor, the danger is that we begin to become tempted with forfeiting our purpose. And why is this so dangerous? It's dangerous because your life is so valuable, so significant, such a vital part and piece of this whole thing that forfeiting it is not an option. And it's not something that's going to be uh, beneficial to your life or the lives of those around you. So we cannot lose our flavor. What's going on, my folks, my people? Welcome back here to another week of the Mentality of Success. Today, we're going to be talking about building a flavorful, F-U-L-L, flavorful life. Uh, we're, we're inching closer and closer to the new year. And one thing I know is how you start the year is probably how, what's going to be the tone and temperature of the entire year. So I want you all to go into this next year jam-packed with flavor. And you may be asking yourself, well, Joshua, why are we using this, this um, uh, analogy of flavor? And it came to me quite often because one of the things I hate the most, well, let me not say hate, hate such a strong word. <laughs> one of the things I highly dislike, if you were to put a plate of food in front of me and that bad boy had no flavor, it is going, you know, it is going away from me. I won't say in the trash, that, that would be a little rude. But it ain't, it ain't going into this body, right? How many of you would agree? Like, how many of you would sit there? How many of you would sit and eat a plate of food that had no flavor? None of us. You'd say, get this away from me. And if I'm sorry, if that's your life and you've grown up that way, I sincerely apologize. <laughs> but for, for most of us, we like our food to have a little bit of, of flavor, right? And it reminds me of the first time I went to a conference. I was in high school and I went to like the first actual professional conference where you sit at these banquet tables during lunchtime and you got like the double sets of, of silverware on each side and you have to learn some etiquette. Well, I remember the first time I was sitting at one of those tables and of course they got like the double spoons, the double forks, but they also give you like two beverages, which is usually at your typical professional conference, it's usually going to be a glass of water. It's not Sprite. Trust me, I checked. And then this other glass with some brown looking liquid in there, which to me, this country boy from Southwest Florida, I thought that's either Coke, but it's too light to be Coke. So it must be tea. So I look up at the, at the server and I ask, Hey, is this iced tea? And the server with a smile says, yes, it's iced tea. So, you know, me, from, from the country, we love some tea. We, we love our tea. Sweet tea, that is. But I learned this the hard way because I picked that up. I picked that glass up to drink it and I almost screamed. Because I for a second, I thought somebody was trying to poison me. I, I kid you not. I thought, they're trying to poison me. And it wasn't poison. It was the fact that that drink had no sugar in it. And I had never drank a glass of iced tea. I didn't even know that was a thing. Like, who are these weird people that actually drink tea without sugar in it? I didn't know those folks existed, but I do now. And at that time, all I could think was, get this away from me. I don't want this. And so you may be wondering, well, Josh, what does this have to do with life? I'm talking about food. You're making me hungry. But what does this have to do with life? Well, our lives are kind of, I would say, very closely seen the same way. If I put a plate of food or if I give you a, a glass of, of iced tea that is unsweetened, the chances are you're going to say, get that plate away from me. I want nothing to do with that. It's the same way that we look at our lives. If our lives lack flavor, many of us would look at our lives and say, I want nothing to do with this. There's nothing here for me. I don't have any. There's no season. There's no taste. There's no, there's no color. It's just bland. It's just meh. And maybe for some of you, your 2022 has been that way. It's been just mad. It's been kind of, you know, no real flavor. But I want to encourage you that we can change that here as we move towards the new year. First thing we have to do, though, is we have to talk about what makes a flavorful life. You know, what, make, what are the ingredients of a flavorful life? So I want to go to our board here. And I want to, there's five kind of ingredients, I will say 
that make up a flavorful life. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna write these down. If you're listening, we're writing because the visual helps it to lock into our brains. I want you to memorize what these five are. There are five elements that make up a, a uh, ingredients that make up a flavorful life. Let me put that on there. We're talking about a flavorful life. The first is the ingredient of hope. Hope. I believe hope is where life starts. Life begins at that intersection of hope. All right, number two is purpose. Hope and purpose give forth a, fav a flavor filled life. Number three is identity. Number four is belonging, sense of belonging, adds flavor to our lives. And number five is growth. Growth. These five right here are the ingredients of a flavor filled life. If you have these five things in your life, if you have hope, purpose, identity, a, a strong sense of belonging, and growth, meaning you are continuously and actively growing. If you point point someone, point out someone who has those ingredients, I will point someone. <laughs> I'm struggling to say this sentence. Point out someone who has these ingredients alive and well in their lives, and I will show you someone who has a flavor-filled life. And if you want to be someone that has a flavor-filled life, these are the five elements you want to make sure are present. Hope, purpose, identity, strong sense of belonging, and growth. All right? So I want you to look at these five again because I have a question for you. And Here's the, here's the little pop quiz. It's your your annual quiz here. If I were to ask you to rate one to 10, I want you to rate one to 10 the level that each ingredient is present in your life currently, what would you say? If I asked you to rate it one to 10, how much hope one to 10 is present in your life? How much purpose one to 10 is present in your life? How much identity, belonging, we go down the list, growth. I did this earlier and I was actually because I actually stopped to do it, I was kind of surprised on, on a few of these. I was like, actually, that's my, that might be a seven and a half, eight. When if you asked me off the cuff, I might have told you, that's my, yeah, that's high. But I want you to take the time to look at these five and assess one to ten. Right now, if you were to go through just in your mind, the, the, the rate, the degree of hope, one to ten. Purpose. Identity, belonging, growth. How are you growing? All right? That is the first step, I believe, in, in taking your life from the flavor that you know that it sits at now to higher levels. If you're not already at a high level. I live my life at a high level of flavor now because of this reason. I'm conscious of how active these ingredients are in my life. And you may be saying, well, Josh, I want to do the same thing. I want to be able to, to take those five ingredients and make sure that they are active, alive, and well in my life. Here's what you have to do. If you want these things to be active and alive in your life, there are five principles. And I'm not going to write them down. I'm just going to tell you about them. I'm going to grab my, my notes here. There are five principles that I, that I wrote down that I think will be very helpful if you're looking to live a flavor-filled life. All right. And those five start with number one. The first principle is you got to assess what really drives you. What really drives you? And what I mean by that is like, what is the what is the that finish line when it comes to your life? Like that goal that you're trying to get to that gets you out of bed every day. Or maybe there is there isn't anything pushing down that pedal and driving you. What's not driving? you? What should be driving you? This may be a better way to ask this question. But no matter how you ask it, the results are the same. If we don't get into our line of vision, a driver, then it has a direct impact or an, a direct attack on our hope, our sense of hope, our sense of purpose. I, by identity, I mean who I am, why I'm here, and how I best serve. Like, like those things, the, the drivers, the thing that you're driving after will determine the, the quality of those areas. And I'll never forget when I was, when I was 
when I was at a point in my life where there wasn't a lot of flavor, what I realized looking back is that the drivers at that point in my life were very superficial. Like they lacked substance. Like one of the biggest drivers in my life at that point was money. There was a time in my life where I thought if I could just get a large sum of money, if I could just win the lotto, if I could just have someone stop by my house and just, I mean, you got five million. If you could just give me a hundred thousand, my life would be flavor filled. Now, here's the thing. Money can add flavor to your life. It, it can add flavor to your life. No doubt. The, the, the challenge is money is a temporary fill. It'll fill your life with flavor, but it's a temporary fill. And it's something that you will require to, you, you will have to maintain that money in order to maintain the flavor in your life. It's very different from things like hope, purpose, identity, sense of belonging, growth. Those things are fundamental, meaning that you can self-generate those things. Like you can control those things. I can't control what will happen in the economy tomorrow. It could all drop. We could all be out here struggling and poor. But I can tell you, if I lost every dime I had today, I would still know how to build a flavor-filled life without the money. And that's the place you want to be in. Because there was a time in my life where I thought, man, if I can get all this money, my life will be flavor-filled. And then I realized, okay, but how would, my, how would getting all this money deal with the fact that I don't see a reason why I'm here? How would all this money deal with the fact that I, I'm very immature? I need to grow. My mentality around life is very poor. Money won't change that. Money can be a resource and a tool that you can use to, to, to help change that, but money itself won't change that. And so my point is, you want to know what are the drivers? What drives you? Are you, are you believing like I once believed, the lie that if you could just get a lot of money, or if you could just get that car, that thing, that your life will, will add a, a lot of flavor, if you can just get that relationship, your life will have a lot of flavor? I'm here to tell you that though that's not the ingredient. The ingredient is those five areas, hope, purpose, sense of identity, belonging, and growth. Those are the ingredients for a flavor-filled life. Money can't buy it. There's not enough substance. There's not enough sex. There's not enough relationship. Well, you know what? That last one, I kind of, I should take that back. Healthy relationships can add a tremendous amount. But if you're relying on a person to fill your life with flavor, that's a dangerous place to be. Unless that person has, he has an eternal, never fail you type character. And those who know, they know. So I, I won't go down there, that route. But number one, assess what drives you if you want a flavor filled life. Number two, pay attention to the themes and similarities that kind of run concurrent through your dreams. Pay attention to those themes that are similar, that have some of the same themes to them. I remember when I was kind of trying to work through that discovery zone, figuring out who I am and, and what I'm made of. I remember that there were certain themes that were always present and continuously kind of popping up. One of them was that I had a high value for people. Like when I was getting ready to go to college, one of the things they asked me, what do you want to do when you go to college? My, my answer was, I'm not sure. All I can tell you is that I love people and I love communicating with people. I love writing things that would impact people. That's why I was in the music. But at the surface level, you would have thought this guy wants to be some sort of music artist and make a lot of money there or, or MBA, make a lot of money there. When the truth was, I wanted two things. I wanted security and I wanted to be able to serve and impact the lives of people. That was the recurring theme through every, you know, real dream in my life. And I ask you, what are the recurring themes in your life? If you're someone that says, man, I want to own a business one day. But what's that recurring theme? What's the, what's the foundational theme there for the reason why you want to do that? Is it just to, to not have to ever work for someone else? Because I can promise you, <laughs> I can promise you that won't be enough to sustain running a business. It will not. There might be some days where you'd be like, I will go work for anyone else right now. I'm, I'm just telling you as a business owner. But point is, what are those themes? 
because those themes will be connected to the flavor. Even when you get into hard times, those themes, when I, when I got into areas where I wasn't sure where I was going to go from a career perspective, like the tangible stuff from, from a working job perspective, what was the next move in my life, those themes, those were the things that kept the flavor alive. Because I may not have known how I was going to communicate or, or connect with people. I didn't know how, but I knew that was something that I valued. And as long as you have that start, you can build from there. You can build off of that flavor. All right? So those are two things. Assess what drives you. And then pay attention to those themes that kind of run through those three themes and similarities that run through your dreams. All right? Very important. Number three, if you want to, main, if you want to maintain a high level of flavor in your life, the third thing you need to do is make sure you stay away from the comparison gaps. Stay away from comparison gaps. There's nothing worse than comparing your purpose, the value of your life, to the values of someone else. And might I add, the highlights of someone else's life, because that's what we really do on social media. We assume that someone else's life is much better than ours because we're only looking at the highlights. Can I tell you something? If you only saw the highlights of my life, you may think author, organizational psychologist, business owner, had, you know, doing well financially. You may think all those things and think, man, what a great life. I, wow, that person's lucky. But you would miss out on some of those lowlights that actually played a role in creating some of the, the accomplishments. And you would think maybe that you and I are far apart when we're really not. And that's what happens when we get lost in the comparison gap. It's almost like I want to trade my baby for yours. Well, no, that's your baby. The value that's within you, that's your baby. You grow it. And it will be something that you add to this world that no one else can. But when you get caught in the comparison gap, you smother your value. You suffocate your purpose. And ultimately dishonor your purpose because you've wasted the time comparing your purpose to someone else's. Don't do that. Don't compare your purpose to anyone else's. You are you, and there's no one like you. There will never be another person like you, which is why you're so valuable. Don't you forget it. All right, so that's number three. Stay away from the comparison gap. Number four, measure your dreams, okay? Measure your, your influence. I'm sorry, let me say it this way. Like, measure your influence by spear not by amount of followers. What does that mean, Joshua? That means when you think about the impact that you're having, please, please do not measure this by silly things like the amount of likes or the amount of followers you have on social media. And I get it. This is our generation. We've created this monster. But a large number of followers does not equal a high level of influence. You can have a low number of followers and still have high influence. Why? Because you're intentional about the, the sphere, the circles around you. There's people in your family that you can have a tremendous impact on. There's friends in your circle that you could have, your value could have a tremendous impact on. The flavor of your life could have a tremendous impact on theirs. I remember my, my boy Nelson one time when I was really struggling relation, relationally and I had this idea that my sole purpose in life was to see how many women I could connect with. And I remember sitting with my boy Nelson at, at we were at Sonics of all places. We had just finished playing ball and we were sitting there and we're, we're bragging how I am bragging and talking about, you know, got this person's number and got this. And we went to Nelson, how about you? He was like, Nelson was like, nah, bro, I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for Mrs. Nelson. I won't say his last name. I'm waiting for the Mrs. I'm going to keep all this waiting for her. And that was the first time I ever had a friend of mine, like have that kind of mentality and perspective. My first thought was, what's wrong with you? Who would, wanna, who would want to do something so silly? But as time went on, I began to really respect and admire that because that's the harder route. It's harder to, to wait and to prepare yourself for that commitment. Only a real man can do that. Any little boy can go into a candy shop and get as many pieces of candy a, a, as he can hold. And that was me. But it took being around someone who had a major impact. This, this is my point here. 
They had a, his influence had a major impact on me because I was in his circle. He was in my circle. I didn't have a bunch of followers. He didn't have a bunch of followers. But his impact, his influence now is alive and well as a married man. Get what I'm telling you. It's not about the number of followers you have. It's about how you intentionally, how you intentionally step into the sphere of influence that you've been given around you. How intentional you are about impacting those within the circles that you are already in. You don't need more followers. You need to, you need to honor the ones that are already following you, that are already have their ear listen, you know, attuned to your voice. That's how you can maintain a flavor-filled life because it, it all boils down to service. When we serve one another, when we add value to each other's lives, nothing adds more flavor than serving. And if you want proof, look no further than the, the wealthy of the world, the, the, you know, those who are rich. If you read through any entrepreneur magazine or you know, any of those magazines from, that give you tips on wealth, Rich people will tell you one of the greatest things that you have to do, one of the biggest things you have to do if you want to be wealthy or maintain wealth is be a giver. It's one of the biggest elements and aspects to building and sustaining wealth. Why? Because nothing else adds flavor. You can have as much money in the world and still lack hope, purpose, identity, sense of belonging, and growth. And they know that the way to keep their lives flavor-filled is to serve. Because when you're serving your sphere of influence, you begin to add flavor to your lives. Because that's what we're here for. We're interdependent, not independent. All right? So, last one here. If you want a flavor-filled life as we're getting ready to go into this new year, this is the last thing that you need to do. You need to make sure is, is a principle. The last principle you need to make is an alignment. All right? And that principle is if you want to have a flavor-filled life, then make sure you are aware of what I call the time horizon. And the time horizon can be described in many different ways, but I'm going to speak to one specific kind of aspect of the time horizon, and that's the seasons of life. There will be some seasons of life where flavor is running low. But what you cannot do is you cannot attribute your entire life to one season. I remember some of those seasons when I was like, I say this all the time, there's broke and then there's like broke, broke. That was me. But because my eyes could see further than that season, because I was flavor in my life, I didn't attribute my entire life and future to that season. There's some of you, if you're not careful, you're going to, you had a bad 2022, and you're going to attribute 2023, 24, 25, 26, or you're going to attribute all those future years to this bad year. When the truth is, if you woke up today with breath in your lungs, you got a chance. You have an opportunity to add some flavor to your world or receive some flavor in your world and begin to see a new season. And so if you're going to add flavor into your life, you want to be aware of the time horizon. This may be a tough season, but I'm here to tell you and encourage you that there are seasons ahead of you that will be much greater and filled with much more flavor. But you cannot tap out. You cannot forfeit your purpose because you're in a bad season. And the best way to hang on is to know that your life was put here for a reason. There's value inside of you that needs to be grown. Maybe that's, maybe that's what this season is all about. The tough seasons are where I grew the most. But if we're not careful, we'll spend all that tough season complaining. Scrolling through social media, comparing, getting envious, coveting someone else's life instead of growing our own. And I'm not saying that to attack you. I'm saying that to encourage you. Whatever season you're in, life is not, does not revolve around this season and is not going to be attributed to the bad things in this season. We can change it or we can turn it around. And you can grow from this. And as you grow from this, your life will be infused with flavor. All right. I hope this is helpful. I hope that this is something that going into your new year that helps you to kind of gain a different perspective or mentality as you go into 2023. 
And as always, make sure you like, subscribe, and share this with someone. Share this with someone that maybe added flavor to your life as a way to say thank you for doing so. All right? But that's all I have for this week. I hope, again, this was valuable to you. I will see you all right here, same time, same place next week, reminding you that success is your destiny. See you on the next one.